I'm Alana Ferry, coming to you from our newsroom at Humber's North Campus. Thanks for joining us. Here's what's making news this hour. One day after President Donald Trump promised fire and fury, North Korea has added a timeline to its threat of missile attacks on Guam. North Korea's state-run television released a statement that the country will develop a plan by mid-August to launch four intermediate-range missiles at the U.S. territory of Guam. The statement said the plan will be presented to leader Kim Jong-un, who will then make a decision on whether to proceed. The missile will allegedly be fired into waters 30 to 40 kilometers from Guam to signal a crucial warning to the United States. Residents of Guam have expressed their concerns. So it's really concerning. You know, um, I wish uh, you know that it didn't have to come to that. I wish that uh, the superpowers of the world would be able to to come up with a different different way to uh, how you say. Uh, fix their problems. Yeah. Governor of Guam, Eddie Calvo, says there are no new alerts, but said the island and its people would be prepared. And they threatened us since 2013, and, uh, and of course that was with more of the intermediate range missiles. Uh, from what we, we see, and this is where, again, the communication dialogue between our administration and the Defense Department, uh, the lay of the land in terms of what is happening in the Korean Peninsula, what is happening in the Western Pacific, what is happening in Guam, uh, there has been no change in, in terms of, uh, of an alert. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau confirmed last night that Pastor Hyun Soo Lim has been released from North Korean prison and will return home soon. In a statement, Trudeau said, the government of Canada was actively engaged on Mr. Lim's case at all levels. Trudeau also thanks Sweden for its assistance as a protecting power. He concluded his statement by asking for privacy for the Lim family. Lim was sentenced to life in prison with hard labor for crimes against North Korea back in 2015. Lim was the longest held Western prisoner. The pastor has had a history of high blood pressure and his health is a concern as he returns to Canada. Cuba is investigating incidents that cause non-life-threatening injuries to Americans serving at the U.S. Embassy in Cuba. In the fall of 2016, several U.S. diplomats in Cuba began suffering unexplained hearing loss. U.S. State Department officials say they believe the diplomats were the victims of some form of inaudible acoustic weaponry. Cuba's Ministry of Foreign Affairs issued a statement emphasizing that Cuba would never allow for such actions to be taken against accredited diplomatic agents. In the same statement, the ministry says a committee of experts has been formed to investigate the incidents and they hope to cooperate with the U.S. in reaching a resolution. In a move Cuba is calling unjustified, two Cuban officials in Washington were asked to leave the country in May following the discovery of the issue. A magnitude 7 earthquake struck the southwestern province Sichuan in China. In the aftermath of Tuesday's earthquake, at least 20 people were killed and 247 or more were injured. About 50,000 people were evacuated from the quake zone. The earthquake cut off power and disrupted phone services in the area. At least 400 fire trucks and more than 1,000 firefighters were dispatched to the scene. At least six of the people who died were tourists. The Sichuan government said a hundred tourists had been trapped by a landslide. The rescued tourists were taken to the shelter center where they were provided with tents and food. In recent months, the province of Quebec has become a major entry point for asylum seekers. As many as 250 migrants a day are arriving in Quebec from the U.S. with a total of nearly 4,000 in the first six months of the year. The Canadian Army is now building a 500-person border camp for asylum seekers. The temporary heated shelters are being set up by a team of 100 soldiers in St. Bernard de la Colle, close to where asylum seekers are. Military personnel will not participate in security matters, and most of the soldiers are expected to return to their home, home bases once the camp is built. According to Canadian officials, most of those crossing into Quebec are Haitians who have been living in the U.S. for years since the 2010 earthquake. Many now feel threatened with deportation from the U.S. as the Trump administration has announced a potential end to the long-standing humanitarian program. Police continue to clash with protesters in the streets of Kisumu, Kenya. 
This comes after recent elections that saw the two presidential candidates in a very close race. People took to the streets after elections results earlier this week saw incumbent President Uhuru Kenyatta with 54.3% of the votes. Opposition presidential candidate Rayla Odinga rejected the results, making accusations of vote tampering and hacking. Protests continue after several days and police are using tear gas to control the situation. However, independent observers from the European Union said there is no sign of vote manipulation. In 2007, simi similar accusations were made leading to violence that saw more than a thousand people killed and millions displaced. Generally, mistrust of the other is an ongoing challenge in Kenya. Some had high hopes that new technologies used in these elections could remove concerns. And while technology can be no substitute for trust, the well-functioning and security of available systems is a prerequisite for confidence. A U.S. resident has taken an interesting route to protest his disapproval of Trump. An inflatable chicken popped up outside the grounds of the White House. The chicken, named Don, sports some poofy golden hair styled in a manner similar to U.S. President Donald Trump's. Its owner, Taryn Singh Brar, a resident of Orange County, California, says he is using the inflatable to bring awareness to how bad and destabilizing our leader is. This is the second time an inflatable has shown up. Last time, it was to pressure Trump to release his taxes. Turning to the three-day forecast, have your umbrellas ready for the upcoming weekend. Today is mostly cloudy with a high of 27 and a low of 19. Friday will be cloudy with a high of 25 and a low of 18 and chance of showers. Saturday will be rainy with a high of 25 and a low of 16. This week, Thousands of Pokemon Go players gather in the Japanese city of Yokohama to watch a series of dance performances and catch rare Pokemon. The week-long festival is curated by the city of Yokohama and the Pokemon Company and has drawn in a worldwide crowd. The massive gathering requ requires so much server space that it has crashed on several occasions. Uh, right now? Yes, very often, because, uh, well, we got hundreds over here all playing, so they're a lot slower, and Nantech has another game called uh, Ingress. I'm not sure if that one's on, but it's probably also pretty bogged down right now with everyone playing. Last month, Chicago hosted its first Pokemon Go festival, drawing in a crowd of over 20,000 people. But there's nothing quite like the event hosted here in Pokemon's homeland. Japan plans to continue hosting these events leading up to the Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games. That's all for today. I'm Alana Ferry. Remember, you can head to humbernews.ca anytime for all the day's news and much more. And, of course, you can also follow us on Twitter. Humber News is written and produced by students in the Journalism Postgrad program. We'll see you again next time.